Dr. Young, you've had great research experience in applying AI to improve the quality of, of care in the healthcare setting, specifically in inpatient um, context. Uh, in using computer vision and more visual data to recognize what's happening in a physical sense in care settings. So can you tell us a little bit more about you know, recent findings in analyzing depth data and how this can provide uh, novel insights healthcare leaders um, at an organizational level can use in optimizing care delivery within their uh, HCOs? Yeah, so a lot of my, my research focus is centered around building this uh, ambient notion of ambient intelligence into healthcare spaces like hospitals, um, like assisted living facilities, and using a combination of visual sensing and computer vision algorithms um, to try and understand as much as possible uh, what's happening in these hospitals and to be able to study that, I think, at a, at a level that you know, we, we can't do just through manual observation. Um, so I hope that this is going to be you know, eventually a very general platform that we can use to study many things. Uh, but some of the initial pilot studies that we've pursued with our collaborators, um, one of them is uh, centered around trying to understand hand hygiene. So when is hand hygiene being performed, um, the act of using a hand hygiene dispenser, for example. Um, and so this is one where we, uh, what we actually want to do ultimately is reason about compliance. Um, and so we took a, a combination of algorithms that we developed to recognize the hand hygiene action, um, as well as tracking algorithms to understand how people are moving around this space um, and put these together to be able to uh, essentially reason across a large space, when is every time hand hygiene happening um, and when is it happening when it should be. Um, a, a second pilot study that we've pursued is trying to understand when patient mobilization activities are happening. Um, and so these are, these are activities like uh, moving a patient out of bed, transferring them to a chair, moving them back into bed, and so on, that um, nurses and, and other healthcare staff will, uh, will periodically do to help patients start moving around um, more early on in their stay. And this has been shown to help prevent a number of complications. Um, and so this was a, a project uh, which we, uh, we recently published and um, showed that we were able to um, do a pretty good job at being able to detect these different activities over time. So over the course of a, of a patient's stay, for example, um, can we, uh, to be able to mark down and record every time you know, a nurse came and mobilized the patient, how did they mobilize the patient? And I think that one of the uh, really exciting things about computer vision is that you know, using this type of, of algorithm, we can, we can be able to, to study much more richer detail besides just, you know, did this activity happen? But we can understand things like, how did it happen? If we want to study how many people were involved, um, how long the activities took, how were they performed? Uh, these are all things that are now possible with computer vision. Um, so these are just a, a couple of examples of some of the initial um, use cases of ambient intelligence that that we've pursued, and I'm hoping there's going to be many more um, that we'll, we'll be studying very soon. Mm -hmm. Great. And when we think about using kind of more traditional data sets for increasing um, outcomes in the hospital setting, like EHR data, claims yeah. data, even registry data, there are pretty kind of robust traditional techniques that we can use to de-identify a lot of those da data yeah. sources. When we're thinking about, you know, applying some of these models to visual data and videographic data, um, how do you think about really ensuring that both patients and providers feel that um, the studies are being used on an aggregate scale to, as you yeah. said, track overall trends for, for optimizing care? Yeah, so I think this, this question of privacy, um, it's a it's, it's really, it's, it's an open question, but I think it's something that's really important to this kind of research. Um, so, you know, it's something that at the first level in our, in our initial pilot studies, um, we've tried to uh, provide de-identification through using depth sensors only, so not collecting color images um, of, of, you know, the, the physical space, but collecting these silhouette-looking images that are based on distance to the sensor. Mm -hmm. And so that, that provides some, um, you know, immediate uh, protection of privacy, but I think that there's still there's still a lot of open questions as we think about moving from where we are now, which is you know IRB approved research studies, mm -hmm. to eventually when we'd like to see this be you know widely used 
um, tool across uh, across hospitals and other healthcare spaces more broadly. And I think that um, when we think about that gap, there's there's a lot of questions that we're going to have to think about in terms of you know how do we protect against certain types of um, uh, malicious attacks, um, trying to identify this data, trying to make you know connections with um, what you can find in, in health records. Um, how how can you, you know, what can this data be used for? What are ways in which people might have access to this data? And how can we make sure that it's um, kept, uh, you know, it's used only for the purposes that it was intended to? And, I th and so I think that there's, um, you know, there's a lot of questions here which we're um, actively, you know, trying to think about and trying to, to guide what this is going to look like um, in the future once it's, you know, um, headed towards more, more wider spread use. Uh, but I think that they're, they're uh, very important um, concepts that, that we're having to think a lot about. Right, and I know that the initial kind of broader use case is within yeah. kind of hospital settings. Um, do you envision uh, in any sort of realizable future that these models that you're working on can be deployed outside of the point of care settings? You know, for instance, you talked about elderly home care settings or potentially pa chronic disease patient home settings to analyze uh, behaviors that are occurring that could that could um, use intervention and, and follow up. Yeah, so I think that the underlying algorithms that we're developing, trying to be able to automatically recognize and interpret the behavior that's happening, the activities, healthcare activities that are happening, these are very generalizable. And so, um, you know, we're developing them such that hopefully uh, they can, you know, be easily adapted to many additional use cases. Um, so I think that definitely it can be, uh, you know, applied to these other other scenarios. I think that, you know, with every setting, there are a different set of considerations about who are going to be the users of this technology and um, how do we think want to think about then how to design the technology such that it will be, you know, useful um, in, in those settings and also considering all of the, um, you know, appropriate uh, privacy and security um, and usability kinds of questions for each specific case. Mm -hmm. And this is your second or third visit with us here at the Big Data Conference. Yes, I think is that it's right? the third time I've participated okay. here. And what are some trends that you think are especially interesting, kind of mo more in context of your prior visits here at the conference that, that are, are most exciting to you? Well, I think that one thing that's um, very interesting to me personally is that in the recent years, and you know, my, my research area is in um, AI and machine learning, um, and so in, in recent years we're starting to see a lot of successes of AI and machine learning applied to, to many different types of problems. Um, I think that at the same time we're starting to see these trends of um, aggregating together large sources of data and thinking carefully about what types of data we're collecting. Uh, data that we want to be you know, large, that we also want to be representative, that we want to understand what populations they're coming from, and that have a lot of individual differences within this data. And so I think that um, one trend I'm really excited about is now thinking about um, you know, more, more deeply how we can develop machine learning and AI algorithms um, that can try and disentangle and understand all of the you know, individual differences in, in these new data sources that are both very large, um, comprised of many different sources of data, different types of data, and from uh, diverse populations. Um, and so that's something that I'm uh, really excited to see um, a lot more work in. Great. Well, it's been fascinating discussing this with you. Thank you so much for taking the time to share your research with us here at Big Data. Thank you for having me. Thank you.